One of the things that we've been asked to solve for in this example problem is the mass flow rate through the boiler. And the way that we're going to go about getting that is we are going to, uh, we, we also know the total power, that the total power coming out of the system is, I believe, 120 megawatts. So consequently, what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, a balance where we're going to find the amount of work, that is the work that we're putting in through the pumps, and then we'll find the work coming out through the turbines, the difference of that would be the power out. Uh, we can then put that in terms of per unit mass flow rate through the boiler, and from that we can get mass flow rate through the boiler. So that's what we're going to proceed and do now. So I'm going to start by writing out the first law. And in all the applications that we're doing here, we'll neglect kinetic energy as well as potential energy. And when we're looking at work in a pump, uh, we can also neglect a heat transfer. And I'm going to express it in terms of work in. Remember, work in is a negative, and that's why we get rid of the negative sign by doing that. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by looking at pump 1. And I'm going to non-dimensionalize the work, and I'll be non-dimensionalizing all of the work terms here by the mass flow rate going through the boiler. Uh, and that is m dot 5. Now, mass flow rate at 1, we can express that in terms of mass flow rate through the boiler minus the mass that is stripped off and sent through the open feed water heater. We talked about that earlier, and with that, we can re-express it in terms of the mass fraction that we saw earlier. So that becomes the expression for work in one. We can then substitute in values. So that's pump one. We'll proceed and do the same thing for pump two. Now, m.3 and m.5, those that's mass flow rate into the boiler and out of the boiler. If we go back and look at our schematic, uh, where was it here? There we go. m.3 and m.5, uh, there's m.5 and m.3 is here. All of those flow through the boiler and there's no stripping or removing there. And so it's the same flow rate at both points. Consequently, that ratio is 1. And so we can plug in values. And so that's what we get for pump 2. Continuing on, let's take a look at the turbine. 
So in a general sense, the equation for a turbine from the first law. Now a turbine is a device that does work. And consequently, it will be a positive work. So with that, we can switch around the enthalpies. We'll look at the high pressure turbine first. And if you recall, all of the mass flow is going through the high pressure turbine. We haven't stripped anything off yet. I'm now going to express that in terms of a per unit mass, so we're dividing by m dot 5. Plugging in values, we get output for the high pressure turbine. Kilojoules per kilogram, and now that's per kilogram mass through the boiler. Taking a look at the low pressure turbine, now remember here we have stripped some of the mass off, so we need to account for that. And we will use the continuity equation in order to express mass flow rate at 8. And that would be m dot 5, the mass through the boiler, minus what we strip off and send through the open feed water heater. Non-dimensionalizing by that, or dividing by that, I should say. And when we plug in the values, we get work out for the low pressure, 787.20. So the net work is going to be the work out of the turbine minus the work that we put into the pump. We get that for the work net, and we can now equate that to the total work out of the steam cycle, or for our plant. So that all needs to equal 120 megawatts. And I will express that in terms of kilojoules per second. And so here, uh, we've determined that, we know that because that's the power output, so we can directly then solve for m.5. Doing that, we get the mass flow rate through the boiler. Eighty-one point eight nine kilograms per second. So that answers the first part of the problem. Uh, the last thing that we're going to do in the next segment is we'll take a look at the thermal efficiency.